Sessions. So, <clears throat> it's a funny thing about that track. So, when I started doing that track, a lot of people, even blogs, thought that I had some kind of past friend relationship or something that was personally related to someone. And I felt it funny how all the comments and all the, um, how, you know, everybody just took a liking to the song and then tried to dissect it for themselves. But they were so far off from what the, the meaning of the song really was. Um, when I was doing gene therapy, basically uh, I was having troubles, um, you know, just creating for a while and I had to go back and find myself. So those were the first couple of words, you know, hello my nigga, you barely visit like you used to. And it's basically referring to my old self and me trying to um, reach my older self. Even the artwork itself says something about reflections. Uh, there's actually a crow in a picture that I photoshopped myself and I caught it outside my dad's apartment and it's, it's a whole all black cover. Looks like it's been scratched out of vinyl and the, the crow is so darkened with the background you can barely see it but you can see the reflection on the floor. And to me that stands for a lot so you know it's, it's funny how people perceive things you know when you uh, tell it a different way through your music. The Crow, if you uh, pay attention to some of the previous videos that um, that were out, The Crow was actually in the Mr. Anderson video. And The Crow was in the trees. And it represents the forest lingering, you know, with uh, gene therapy. Because gene therapy is Rhino. And Rhino is searching for Ryan through the forest. There are like so many characters. You know, you got Davy Jones, the soul. I just call him Davy Jones for short. Uh, Dave's in there. Uh, we got Nisi. We have, um, you know, Ryan, Rhino. And, you know, we have a couple of other artists on the EP that tell their particular story through their verses or however they, you know, perceive the song and took it from there. Gene Therapy was basically when I was going through a hard time and I was growing up and it was about me trying to find myself in the world. You know, I don't smoke. I don't drink, you know, so a lot of people think, you know, oh, he's not fun, he can't do this, he can't do that, you know, party, such and lines, yada, yada, yada. But it was more so me just trying to find myself as an individual person, more so than some someone else who's a, a replica within society. So gene therapy really came about one day while I was just with my, my uncle and, and my brother and we were walking and I just thought, you know, gene therapy, you know, the actual definition behind it talks about the EP in itself, you know, and it's basically about Rhino trying to find Ryan and he's going through trial and tribulations through different parts of the brain. Ryan's a character in the songs as a kid and Rhino's an adult version. Uh, the basis behind gene therapy is Rhino's trying to find Ryan and Rhino's an adult and Ryan is a kid and Rhino's trying to get back to that point in life where when he was a kid, everything was magical. You know, as you start to get older, you start to develop habits and ways based on the environment and things that you learn while growing up. And it really takes away from your childhood sometimes. So, you know, you have to go back and revisit that to find out who you really are and what you really loved. You know, art has stuck with me to this day. When I was a kid, my dad would call me Rhino all the time. Like, I don't care where I went, whether it was high school, middle school. For some reason, people called me Rhino. The people in my life have always made impacts. So I make my music around things that happen in my life and people that happen in my life. You know, a lot of people take for granted the things that happen to them. I'm joyful for the bad times and the good times because you learn from the bad times. And, you know, and, uh, that's what Jane Therapy is about. It's about me coming to understanding myself growing up and going through trial and tribulations along with the people in my life and what they've taught me and me displaying that within my music. So every time you know, I write a verse or I hear something, it's more of me going back and forth, you know, from adulthood, childhood, adulthood, childhood. And I reflect emotionally how I felt in my music that way. You know, songs like Frontal Lobe, songs like uh, Patient Zero, songs like You're Damn Right, Mr. Anderson. Uh, you know, just a couple other songs that are gonna be talked about now, haven't been released yet, but look forward to them. So the main characters going from different parts of the brain. They go from the uh, cerebral cortex 
to the insulin stratum, to the frontal lobe, you know, uh, just different parts of the brain. And each part of those brain have different functionalities. And so the, I tried to play a part where each song, you know, progress the progression of that song is going to travel from brain to brain to part of the brain to part of the brain to part of the brain and it's going to show him aging and getting more mature more mature and it's going to show signs of happiness signs of love signs of depression uh things that average people go through every day in life and that's what gene therapy is all about it's about this particular guy trying to find himself and he's showing each stage and process as he's growing up so so one day I had a fan come hug me and they told me that my music actually helped them. And I really didn't understand that. But after a while I thought about it, you know, it was like they had the same experiences I had and they were kind of dealing with the same things I was dealing with. And it actually gave them kind of a voice, a voice they thought that nobody else heard before. You know, and that really, that stuck with me to this day because I've never experienced that before. You know, I've always had friends that I've hung around, you know, since high school or, you know, childhood friends, but it's different to have some total stranger come and hug you. It's different, it's different growing up in a neighborhood where you're not liked by a particular races, but then you're not liked by your own race because you're light skinned, you know. I, my, my nickname was actually White Boy because I talked so fluently, a lot of kids in my school thought my parents were Caucasian, you know? And then they kind of put me in a loop of, okay, they want you to act like this, and they want you to act like this. So you're kind of in the middle. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, you know I, I love both of my parents dear today. My mom's here, my dad's here, I'm really grateful for that. You know, I grew up uh, kind of concealed to myself. I was always an observer, so. I would go through things like, you know, sometimes not having food or, you know, just people pushing you to the side because they don't see what you can see in yourself and finding yourself worth was like the best thing that ever happened. Hello, my nigga, you barely visit like you used to. Ha, <laughs> shit. I mean you used to, I mean you used to Be so cool, you seem so distant, you seem so far nigga Now you seem so rude, 